Imagine you have a box stacked with straws, and now your challenge is to rearrange them back into the box. But the rule is, no two straws can lie in exactly the same direction. They can touch, cross, or run close together. But not a single pair should overlap 100%, even in parallel. How would you do it? Whether you manage to solve it or not, this toy puzzle is meant to mimic something newer networks fundamentally do, which is to pack as many patterns as it can into a fixed and finite space. But unlike our little toy box, the newer network cramps far more things than it technically has room for, but with trade-offs. This is a phenomenon called superposition. The kind of superposition we're referring to comes from the paper Toy Models of Superposition, which describes how neural networks can represent many more features than the number of neurons available. It's not an intuitive idea at first, and we'll unpack what features mean soon. But if superposition really exists in current neural networks, it may imply that a model with hundreds of billions of parameters is just a compressed version of an even larger and sparser system. In this video, we'll dive deeper into the characteristics of superposition such as how and where does the model store more patterns than it has neurons for, what happens when too many patterns get packed too closely together, and can the model still tell them apart despite overlap. Now let's move our straws into the high dimensional space where each straw becomes a vector that points in some direction. In this video, we'll call each vector a feature. Here we define a feature as a pattern the network has learned to recognize from training data, like positive sentiment, warm color, or has fur. In this toy setup, we'll think of each feature as a direction and activation space. For example, the word dog might activate a furry animal feature. In our simple toy example, each component of the three-dimensional input vector for the word dog represents the string of one feature. In theory, if there are the same number of features as dimensions, each feature can align with a unique dimension and be orthogonal to the others. If there are only two features in a two-dimensional space, they could sit 90 degrees apart so their dot product is zero, meaning no interference. But because there are usually more features than dimensions in the network, they can't all be perfectly perpendicular. Some features will inevitably point in roughly the same direction. During training, gradient descent optimizes the loss in a way that often spreads feature directions apart to reduce interference. So if we squeeze three or more features in the 2D space, at least two Two of them will partially overlap, meaning that activating one feature may unintentionally trigger part of another signal. Before we talk about how the model manages feature overlap and interference, let's see where and how these feature vectors live inside a network. Each layer of the network has a certain number of neurons that define its dimensionality. If a hidden layer, which is an intermediate layer in a network, has 768 neurons, it creates a 768 dimensional space where each neuron represents one dimension. This is why we call the space high dimensional. As data flows through the network, it is multiplied by a weight matrix that maps it from one space into the next. As the input vector transitions between layers of different dimensions, let's zoom in on one layer to demonstrate superposition. Let's use our toy input vector that encodes three features, and W is a 2x3 matrix that compresses the three-dimensional input vector into a two-dimensional hidden space. Each column of W represents the direction in the 2D hidden space where an input feature is mapped from its original 3D space. So the first column, W1, is a 2D direction for the first feature, W2 for the second, and W3 for the last one. In reality, features aren't always exactly columns of the weight matrix, and they can span multiple neurons and layers. Here is just a simplification to make the underlying geometry visible. Now, you may be wondering why aren't these three feature vectors equally spaced at 120 degrees in the 2D space? The answer is that the model doesn't treat all features equally. It adjusts their geometry based on their importance and correlation patterns. Features that co-occur often get rotated closer to being orthogonal to reduce interference. 
even if that sacrifices a bit of packing efficiency. While rarely co-occurring features can afford to overlap more with no practical interference. After compression, the network reconstructs information by projecting the hidden vector back into the original higher dimensional space. But because the columns of W are not perfectly orthogonal, this reverse projection pulls in some signals from neighboring directions that blur the original features. So how does the model handle this interference to still produce accurate outputs? A key assumption behind superposition is sparsity, meaning that most features don't activate at the same time. For example, it's rare for quantum physics and cooking recipes to show up at the same time in real-world scenarios. So the model can safely position their vectors close to each other without practical interference. But for the cases where overlapping features do coactivate and risk interference, the network uses learned biases to shift unwanted positive signals from non-target features into the negative range. Nonlinear activations, like ReLU, can enhance sparsity by suppressing weak or spurious activations, and then clip these negatives to zero, preventing them from propagating and distorting the output. So far, we covered the core geometry of superposition, that neural networks can represent many more features than they have dimensions by accepting some interference. But there are still other aspects we haven't touched on from the original paper, like phase transitions where features drawn from orthogonal to superposed arrangements as their importance changes, or how individual neurons become polysemantic, responding to multiple unrelated concepts. We'll likely save these in another video.